Um, so this is the, the time in the, in the schedule where you go to the sleeper sessions because we, we've just had lunch and we're all ready to get comfortable and take a nap, right? So um, hopefully uh, we'll, I'll keep your attention <laughs> as best as I can. Um, all right, yeah, welcome to a session on Docker Power Team and Deployment. Um, my name is David Newman. Uh, there's a link um, to my GitHub page, which is actually just a link to these slides. So if you want them, um, if you want to grab these slides later or whatever, uh, I'll, I will also post these slides in the, in the session on the uh, conference website. Um, yeah. Um, just briefly about myself, um, on Drupal, my username is Dave N. Um, Yeah, I've been working with Drupal, I think, for about seven years. Uh, and I've been working at Civic Actions uh, for around four years. Um, Drupal developer, sysadmin. Um, just want to also mention Civic Actions. I, I know we shouldn't do too much you know, self-promoting of our, our companies. Uh, but I, I want to make a claim that I think Civic Actions has the highest average height for any Drupal company. You take the averages over height. I, there's a lot of us over six feet, so uh, anyone is welcome to challenge that. But <laughs> I think we might be among the tallest Drupal companies, so <laughs> something to consider. Um, and yeah, I, I, we're in the the DevOps track here. I, I think um, DevOps. I started becoming interested in that uh, subject about a year and a half ago. Really. Um, Drupal plus DevOps um, really got into it more at DrupalCon Amsterdam, which I was at. Um, really great sessions there as well. <coughs> Sorry, just thought, uh, can everybody hear me okay? Am I in the back? Everybody, thumbs up. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, so DevOps track, welcome. I, there's a lot of good looking sessions in this, so uh, please enjoy. and. This session, I'm going to be talking about Docker um, and how to use Docker for your development team, so your developer sandboxes. And um, I'm also going to try to describe how to use it in, in deployment as best as we can. And um, and yeah, I'll have a time for questions afterwards. Um, so sandboxes. <laughs> this is a picture of my daughter's sandbox. She's two years old. Um, and what uh, what makes up a sandbox for a developer? Um, not these tools, but but basically when, when you st a developer starts on a project that for your your company doing a Drupal project, they need the code, the Git repository. Uh, they need a snapshot of a database, um, and then you know the actual running services, uh, be it Apache or Nginx or um, the database running itself, of course. Uh, then there's also developer tools, uh, SAS, Compass, um, Code Sniffer, those kinds of things. So there's a lot of different components, and actually this is a growing set because we keep coming out with new and exciting things, right? Um, like in, in Dries' keynote, he's talking about the front end. I'm not a front end guy, so I'm, I'm really not up on that, uh, but Angu Angular, Backbone. So all there's a whole slew of different things. Um, and yeah, so a typical team you have to you have to really think about how are developers using all these tools together and um, yeah, what what does it look like for on your developer's machine? Um, here's <laughs> here's my daughter uh, playing outside of her sandbox. Um, who here actually supports your team in their developer sandbox? Like. They, they have problems setting up, ramping up into the project. Yeah, so about a third of you. Um, yeah, I, I do that as well. And, and it's hard to do because you just never know how they're going to use it or how it might change. So I, I think this image is interesting because she's like not playing with a sandbox. She's playing with water in a broom outside of the sandbox. <laughs> um, so you never know how messy it might become, 
for, and, and sandboxes are really, is it, who has kids? <laughs> sandboxes are messy, it gets everywhere. Anyway, um, so that's sort of what I'm starting with is talking about sandboxes. Docker uh, came along about a couple years ago. It's a really active community. Um, I, I did a tweet with the hashtag Docker and I got like 1400 retweets and <laughs> no not sorry 1400 impressions but it's it's a very active community there's a, there's a lot of people on Twitter and of course that there's docker conferences and everything um, so what is docker <coughs> it's um, this is my description of it it's probably broader than this but it's an elegant new cross-platform development and deployment tool um, if you go to the website, the website's really great too, actually check it out. Um, great documentation uh, and good intro to Docker itself. But they talk about build, ship, run. Um, and what they're describing there is basically a common experience for your development and deployment. Uh, that, that's, in my mind, that's an underlying goal of what Docker is. So that your, your development team is essentially using the same stack the same tool as what's ending up on production. Um, and the, the primary um, metaphor, the primary image for Docker is a shipping container, um, which I think is a great analogy. Uh, and I don't want to go too far into that, but actually that'll come up later as I describe other things. But um, so it's, in a sense, Docker is virtualization. It's very similar to a virtual machine, like VirtualBox. Um, how many people use Vagrant? Wow, like everybody. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's, it's a tool very much like Vagrant. Um, this diagram shows, this makes it pretty clear for me anyway. The left side shows kind of how Vagrant will work with VirtualBox or whatever the virtualization tool is. The, the underlying infrastructure, the hardware, and the operating system, those are similar on both of those. Um, and then with a virtual machine setup, you also need the hypervisor. And then the guest OS. So you, if, you, if you're running, in this example, three different applications, um, each one of those applications need the entire guest operating system, including the kernel and all of the running things. Um, yeah, then the libraries and everything, and then your application would be on top of that. So if you had, just uh, an example, if you had two Drupal projects on the go, you, you could have two of them, two virtual machines running with entire stacks like that. Docker, uh, on the right side, uh, is way more efficient. Um, it actually reuses the running kernel, the, the running Linux kernel of the host is, is reused. I, I don't know if I'm explaining that well, but it, it, it's much more lightweight, um, and, and the uh, <coughs> basically you just run your supporting libraries or whatever in your application within a container. Um, and what the, yeah, what that allows you to do is because it's so lightweight, you can actually have a whole bunch of containers, like potentially hun hundreds of containers, on the same. Um, on the same host. Um, and if you are like just running similar things especially, it's more, uh, it's more efficient to do re sort of repeated images of a container. Um, yeah. Docker, <coughs> actually I should also ask, how many people are familiar with Docker at all? So, okay, a lot of you. How many have used Docker? Uh, more than half, okay. Okay, I'll try to go quicker through sort of the Docker intro because <laughs> um, I think you already know, some, you probably already know a lot of these things. So there's the Docker engine. Here, here's a list of some of the main components that I've encountered anyway in the Docker <coughs> world. Um, the Docker engine is what's actually running uh, the Docker containers. Um, then there's the Docker command, uh, the CLI, to build and run um, and so on. Uh, boot to Docker is a vagrant image that runs Docker Machine. 
basically. Um, Docker Compose, uh, I think Docker Compose, it, well for me it's a very central tool. I think it's a great way to um, really organize what you're doing. Um, and it's, well Docker Compose uses YAML configuration files, so Drupal 8 uh, people would be familiar with that syntax. Um, Docker Machine is uh, one of the newer tools. Um, it's actually replaced the <coughs> the um, the command line interface of Docker, uh, sorry, of boot to Docker. Um, but it's expanded. At Docker Machine, you can connect to your local Vagrant uh, boot to Docker thing, but you can also use Docker Machine to connect to the cloud. It, it's a very powerful tool. Um, uh, I don't know if it's pronounced kitematic or kitematic, uh, but that, but that's a, a, a GUI tool for um, OS X, maybe Windows. I'm actually a Linux guy, so I never tried that yet. Um, it's for Windows as well, okay. And I've heard there's actually a way to run it inside Docker if you wanna try it in Linux. I haven't tried that yet. Um, and then Docker Registry, uh, so that's for um, sharing your Docker images. Um, that's a pretty loose way to put it, but yeah, you can Docker Registry can you can very much like Git in my mind. You can kind of push and pull images. You can commit them, and um, and then Docker Hub is is like GitHub. Uh, Docker Hub is a public free service of Docker registry with even more features on top of that. Um, yeah, more details on that link. Um, I should also clarify that the difference between a Docker image and a Docker container. Uh, an image is something like, um, in a way it's like a snapshot of a container and a, and a container is a running image. And that sounds cyclical because it kind of sometimes is. Uh, but you can also create an image from a Docker file, very much like a Vagrant uh, file, where it builds an image. Um, so a container is a, is basically a running instance. And what can what can you put in a container? <laughs> the, yeah, anything. <laughs> this is a, a picture of um, uh, shipping containers put together to make a, a, a nice cottage. There, there's inter there's a lot of shipping containers in the world and people are being creative about them. Um, but with a, a Docker container can, can be as big and complex as a virtual machine uh, as you would have in a Vagrant example. But it, it can actually be so uh, simple and small as a single process. You can have it run just, a, a, a container can just do echo hello world and then it shuts down again. Um, and then you can have a better example maybe would be a container running a database and a container running Apache. Um, but then the question is how do you connect those together? Um, so here's another interesting image. I, I've actually learned a bit about sh the shipping world and containers as I was preparing this. It's, a, it's an interesting space. Um, but shipping containers can be stacked together to make a city. Um, but how do you connect them together in Docker? Um, there's ways on the command line to do that where you, you can link, um, yeah, you can link a, a container to another container so that inside the container it knows how to find the other one um, via etc host mapping and so on. Uh, but in my mind, this is uh, do, this is a Docker Compose YAML file. In my mind, this is a, a pretty simple way of understanding those connections. Um, and I don't know, this, this is a simplified example maybe. Um, I, I, I took this from a real project, um, but we, there's three components to it. There's the database uh, container, PHP container, and the web container. So um, this project is running PHP FPM. Um, and so the, the database doesn't really need to connect to anything but the PHP container needs to connect to the database. Um, so I, I don't know if you can see this in the back, sorry. I, I just wanted to put this up as an example, but uh, 
what we're doing here is we're defining the database. You say what image you want, MariaDB. Um, you can set some environment variables so that when the container starts up, it has these values. Um, and then you expose ports. And then the PHP container, similar thing. You say what image you want to use, what command you want to start running. That's another nice option. But then the, the links uh, section of PHP there is it links to the database container so that PHP has access to that. Um, and then similar with the, the web container, Nginx connects to PHP. So, um, yeah. Anyway, that, that in my mind is, is an amazing way to use Docker because you, you can put that in your um, Git repository. You have infrastructure as code. You basically define your stack however you need it to be. Um, more on on Docker. There's, <laughs> I took I took this uh, I, I grabbed this image from the Docker website itself. I don't really know what's going on here. Um, <laughs> I recognize the penguin. That must be Tux, right? Um, but <laughs> but it, it looks a little funny. But I think it's trying to convey Docker is fun. And, and I agree with that. I actually really enjoy working with it and messing around with it. Um, an, another, sorry, I really like getting to know what people are doing, but who's running Linux on your workstation? Oh, awesome. I think this is a European thing. Oh, okay, at least half, I think. Um, I'm running Linux as well on my developer workstation. And like when I... When I started playing around with Docker, I downloaded it, and it's like, wow, everything is super fast. This is an amazing tool. Uh, and then I played around with um, Fig at the time, which became Docker Compose. Um, and I was setting up Drupal on it, and I thought this is absolutely amazing because we can do infrastructure as code. We can do lightweight things. We can switch projects easily because if I switch to another directory and do, like, uh, Docker Compose up, and then there we go, it's up and running. I was I was just loving it. Um, and then we're good to go. I look on the Docker website, check the installation documents, and there's like a whole list of operating systems there. <laughs> um, so uh, earlier I asked who supports their development team. Does anybody support their development team sandboxes <laughs> using Docker? A few, okay. Um, yeah, so I, I I do that. I help people on board at, at Civic Actions. They get on a project, and then I help them get their tools set up or whatever. Especially new employees get get up to speed with what we're using. Um, yeah, a lot of people use Max OS X is very popular. I got them to install Docker, and um, <laughs> basically looks like a shipwreck. <laughs> So this this um, this is my impression of a Max user experience <laughs> of Docker. So it, it's really it can be quite horrible. You, it, this is a by the way uh, this is an image of um, a container ship that grounded. It's called Rena or something. Um, yeah. So it, it grinds to a halt. There's like do there's containers falling in the water. It's, it looks horrible. Um, so, so on Mac, it, it was incredibly slow, and at first I couldn't figure out why. Um, so I'm trying to support these people, and I'm looking at my machine, and everything's amazing. And then I look at theirs, and it's falling apart. Um, I found out through you know Googling that uh, the way we, we were using it, it the, we were using the, the official default boot to Docker um, that, uh, that you can get still on the, on the Docker website. It uses a file synchronization called VBoxFS uh, for synchronizing your files, so the Git repository to uh, Vagrant. And then within Vagrant, it's doing another synchronization to the containers. So there was, it was all about uh, file I.O. And, it was, and we were, I was running like a test suite on my computer that took uh, two minutes, and it was taking 20 minutes on on a very powerful Mac. So, um, 
what do we do about that? Well, it, since we found out it was about I.O., that we discovered there was another um, vagrant image available out there on, uh, uh, on GitHub, and to the rescue. We have, uh, there's another um, boot to Docker that we're using. Thanks, Leonard. Actually, is, is Leonard in the room? Don't know if he's at the conference. Um, anyway, this is awesome. We've been using this for all our OXS, o, bleh, OSX um, users, and I'm pretty sure it works with Windows. We actually don't have any Windows users. Sorry if, the, I, I'm pretty sure there's ways of doing Docker in Windows, um, but I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> um, but anyway, there is there is good news for you on OS X. Um, yeah, and w what the big difference was here is that instead of using the default um, vagrant uh, file I/O sharing thing, it uses NFS, and we are getting much better performance on running running tests and on um, on actual Drupal performance. So. That's that saved us a lot of uh, grief, <laughs> and um, yeah, once we kind of got over that hurl hurdle, we're actually now using uh, Docker for basically all of our cur current projects, all of our new projects. There's some old ones that we're still um, working on that, that don't have it, um, but our, our primary things going on right now, uh, so Linux and non-Linux, we're using Docker in uh, for our developers. Um, so, introducing Bolin. Uh, you, you can pronounce it Boline. Uh, anyway, it's Bolin is uh, it's a knot. It, I I enjoy sailing. I don't sail as often as I want to, but every sailor knows the Bolin knot. Um, and I thought it's a loose connection to the shipping container metaphor. I don't think any containers use use Bolins, but anyway, it's a loose connection. <laughs> Um, but anyway, what is this project? Basically, it's a, it's a collection of simple bash scripts that, that bring things together for Docker, um, a Docker setup for Drupal. It, it's very Drupal focused. Um, I started, I basically started about a year ago on this. I, I forget when I put it on GitHub, but this is what we're primarily using at Civic Actions for our projects. Um, Originally, it was actually inspired from the uh, Drupal CI test bot. Uh, cheers to you volunteers who are building that and everybody working on that. That's a really cool infrastructure. Um, so I was taking ideas from that code, from the Drupal test bot, and then kind of reworking it um, for project sandboxes, so you're for creating a, um, yeah, a Drupal-based website. Um, there's eight contributors for Bolin on GitHub, uh, but mostly it's all me. Um, uh, but yeah, there's there's been a, a few great little pull requests. We actually hired one of the contributors, so cheers. Um, I think we're still hiring, so check it out. Uh, but what is Bolin trying to do? Um, trying to be, well, there's, yeah, project goals for Bolin. Um, flexibility. Uh, yeah, we, we work with a, a variety of different hosting platforms depending on the projects. Uh, sometimes projects come with their own um, yeah, production and everything like that. So flexibility was really important uh, to be able to also uh, maintaining old websites. So not just flexibility about uh, deployment, but flexibility even where um, what do you do with Docker 6, uh, sorry, Drup Drupal 6, uh, all the way up to Drupal 8. Uh, we didn't want it to be uh, too rigid for that. So that means different PHP versions um, and so on. Um, another goal, quick start. Uh, the ideal is um, d a new developer or developer comes on the project. We want them to just you know clone the Git repository and run build and it should do everything for them. The first time, you know, we'll have to get them installed, get Docker installed on their machine, but once that's up and running, hopefully one command and you're there. Um, 
and then import the database. <laughs> okay, two steps. Uh, minimal requirements, I mean, Docker allows, just with the lightweight containers, you can bake anything you want in there. Um, it's something that we want to do more of. There's a lot more to, to add than the, what Bolin has. It's, um, all right, so um, the way Bolin works, it's actually not, uh, I think this is kind of distinctive in this space. Um, it actually, you, you bake it right into your uh, project repository. So it's not a command that you have in your system, that like, a, I don't know, like Vagrant or so many other commands that, that you do. Um, it actually, it's just a set of bash scripts that, that you would install right into your Git repository so that everybody has the same tools. Um, this might be too small, but I'll talk through it. There's a one, one line command to install it into your repository, which is on the top there. You don't really need to know what it says. You can just copy and paste it off of um, the Bolin uh, GitHub repository. Readme has, has this. Um, and what does that do? It, it actually creates a, a secondary remote. Um, just to clarify, this is not something like your whole dev team would need to do. You need to do this once, so maybe your technical lead for the project or something would, would want to try this out. Um, you run this command. It adds uh, Bolin as a, a repository to your local Git uh, repo. Checks out the code. So, I mean, then you can always do a diff, check what's going on, right? Um, and then it actually, well, it has a series of prompts and it says, would you like to build uh, the Docker containers? The default set from Bolin will, will uh, I think it has PHP 5, uh, 5, 5 something. The default um, will work with Drupal 8. Uh, if you need to do an old one, you probably need to do this and then hit no and do manual tweaks to get an older PHP and then carry on. Um, but what's happening here is it finished installing it and then say yes, install, um, sorry, if you say yes to build the containers, it, it does that. It actually runs a docker compose command. Uh, then it, it, it spits out the container IP addresses. That's the, um, the docker subnet on your computer. And if it's the, the web container, it also makes that into a link. Um, then, if it's a brand new project, you maybe want to initialize the dat database with um, site install. So you can hit yes, and it will do the drush si command on on that new. Or more likely, you're doing this to an existing project, so you want to get a database snapshot and import that. Um, yeah. And. What is Bolin providing? Um, as I mentioned, infrastructure as code. So essentially that Docker Compose YAML file where you define, um, define your stack and check out the Docker Com Compose documentation for all the things you can do there. But it's also providing um, bash scripts so you can, uh, you can run your test suites and um, do your imports and backups and things like that. that it's, it's all added in. It's also, um, it's written with the mind that you can easily add more things to those uh, commands. Um, like there's a simple run command where you run your, your test suite. So the idea is you could add what you need to for that project. Um, so that the tools, automation, it's all baked into your Git repository. Um, so once you have it, it once you have Bolin installed, well then you can push it if you like it and then forget about it or like you, you can even remove the Git remote if you're done with it. Um, but then what, what do your developers do? Your developer team, um, yeah, they, they do the Git clone of your Drupal project. Then uh, there's a command called activate. So, uh, th so this is bash code, um, works in, uh, Z shell as well. Um, and then you source this activate, so that's dot space bin slash activate. And that just adds something to your path so that you have new commands available. 
um, s such as the following ones, you run build and that will um, run the Docker Compose to, uh, to start up the containers. Once the containers are up and running, then uh, you do uh, settings in it, and that will actually add um, a little snippet to the end of settings.php in Drupal, and it will uh, check if the file exists um, for the Docker uh, settings, and if it does, it will include those. So then Drupal will know um, from that command, it will add that, that check, then Drupal will know where to find the database. Um, then uh, there's a pull command, which is totally project specific, so you, you kind of have to put in your own things there, but pull will um, pull in a database snapshot, uh, so that's pull it, you, you need of course your credentials to your project, your SSH keys, but we have pull set up to, to pull in that, or you can also have a pull in any assets, file assets, uh, into like um, into your site's files folder. Basically, you put pull in, you put in the pull script, whatever the developer needs to, to download, um, including, of course, the database snapshot. The import command, obviously, imports a, the, the SQL snapshot into the database, and you're done. Um, then Drush UI, of course, gives you um, login. Uh, when you run Drush, it's an important note, it's actually running Drush in, it's doing a Docker command to run Drush. Um, so it'll do a Docker exec something. But that's, uh, that Drush will run Drush inside of the running container. Um, so all of your Drush commands, like Drush ULI, will, will do that. It will give you your login, uh, if you want to clear, clear cache, whatever. So, um, yeah, command highlights. I already went over a bunch of these. Sorry. Yeah. Are those prefixed with bow on? No. Um, that's a current discussion. Because <laughs> I, I, I want to make it available both ways. I, I had a, a discussion with m one of my coworkers about that, uh, that it might be more intuitive to have it like bolin build and bolin import. But right now, the, what that funny line is doing, the dot space bin slash activate, that's changing your path so that it includes um, the files in your project slash bin directory, which which is installed in the Git repo. So th those are actually just bash commands. Um, and so maybe that makes sense for build or whatever. Then drush is actually overriding your drush command. Um, so if you want to use your own drush installed on your computer, then you just run deactivate. Um, or open a new bash session, but yeah. Um, so I, I kind of want to make it work both ways, but right now it's working in this activate mode, um, which, which is working for us, so. Uh, but it, it would be good to have it work either way, depending on what the developer wants to do, so. Um, so, yeah, we already talked about build and import. Another command is check. <laughs> um, that, that's a fairly new one I added, but that the, that attempts to go through um, your system to make sure everything is running that you need for Docker to work, uh, like it does a Docker version, and if it sees that it can't connect to the Docker engine, then it will fail and say, fix this or whatever, or you need to run Vagrant or whatever it is. Um, so it's just a series of checks, pretty handy for um, yeah, doing support, it, it kind of made things easier for me. Basically, I put, put a collection of the common problems that I've seen people have that I've been supporting, I put it into a bash script, so <laughs> um, that might help solve problems for other people, I hope too. But and then build, import, backup, just creates a snapshot of your, um, of the database. Run, I think I already talked about that, but that's the intention of um, running your test suite, whatever that might be, be at. Um, and then, yeah, as I was saying, when you do activate, these commands are then overriding your existing commands if you have them. So your developer doesn't have to have Drush installed, but if they do, and then they activate, this overrides it. But once they exit or de deactivate or open a new 
bash, bash session, um, then they get their original drush again. Um, same with Composer. So Composer will run PHP Composer in the container. If you need to um, do Composer install or Composer whatever, um, and PHP CS for code sniffing, and it, it, that also runs inside the container, so your whole dev team is running the same version of all these things. Um, oh, cool. <laughs> Sorry. I have a broken image on my version here, but it's up there. That's cool. So Drupal 8. Um, another part of Bolin is something called the hoist command. And um, the, that's another sailing metaphor, I guess. But you can hoist the main sail. <laughs> um, but the idea there is in, instead of installing just what the default um, Bolin provides to get you up and running, you can also pull in other whatever it is. Uh, so Drupal 8, uh, all you have to do is hoist Drupal core dev. And if you want to, instead of working on a Drupal project for a client, if you want to work on Drupal 8 uh, core, there you go. <laughs> um, if you've had, like if everything's up and running already, like you've, you have a Bolin installed, you do this, it will um, yeah, bring up, it will actually get clone uh, Drupal 8 and move it to uh, the doc root folder and um, go through that build step and give you the um, the IP address and then you can do drush ULI again and whatever. Um, other examples, bhat codeception. So out of the box, B, uh, Bolin doesn't provide these, but your testing infrastructure, um, you probably, maybe you want to like bring B, B hat into um, into your code. So everybody, your whole dev team can have, we're using B, B hat, uh, but Codeception is also a great looking project. Um, but then everybody's got the same version of B hat because it's running inside a container, right? Um, so you just run that command. It, uh, it actually just changes scenes in, in, in this case, it changes scenes in the uh, composer JSON file and some I think it's like five lines of code <laughs> to, to do that um, and creates some test directory and actually runs the test. Um, all right. So that was developer sandboxes. Um, then when we get to our CI, we want to run like a full test suite. We don't want to, uh, we don't, the developers aren't going to run the whole suite. It takes a half an hour or more, depends what, what you're doing and how many tests you have. Um, but yeah, it basically our, uh, sorry, who's using Jenkins? So we, yeah, almost everyone. Um, more than the Linux users. <laughs> um, so Jenkins, basically uh, a really advanced task runner. Uh, this is, I pulled this, um, change the project name, but I pulled this from one of our project or one of our Jenkins projects and this is a build step um, just a few lines of bash so we change into the directory we activate we build I add sleep because that solved an error and then we run the full test suite um, and this is very similar to the developers experience because they just activate build and they up, and they're up and running so um, Oh, and there's no import in this one because <laughs> there's a bit of a trade-off. Uh, I actually have another Jenkins build that does the import, so it depends how long your import takes. Uh, but there's a trade-off for accuracy and time. We wanted to see test results a little sooner. Um, so I have another one that looks just like this, but it doesn't do run. It does import to get a fresh database snapshot. But, um, Okay, going back to sandboxes. <laughs> um, some key challenges that we faced, as I already mentioned, was the file synchronization. So that's the third point. Um, but yeah, the, the boot docker uh, from Blink Reaction, now F FW, uh, that one kind of solved that for us. Um, another problem that we've come across, if you're developing 
sorry, if you're supporting your developers on Docker, you might come across this, but the Docker API changes. So if you upgrade Docker to 1.8 and your develop and your developer was on 1.7, then their Vagrant might be on 1.7, and then it doesn't work, and shipping containers fall in the ocean. Um, <laughs> and then uh, file permissions, going backwards up the list. File permissions uh, was was a challenge early on where you test uploading a file, then it screws up, whatever. Lots of file, like um, <laughs> PHP errors can't access so-and-so file. Um, and that, that's actually solved in Bolin with, uh, with the Docker entry point. Excuse me. Uh, the Docker entry point is sort of the first thing that gets run uh, when the container starts. And what it does is it checks the var www directory, which is the mount point of your project. It checks the, um, the user ID of that, which is your user. It, um, and it sets Apache to run as that, and it sets PHP to run as that user. So, <laughs> so within the container, it's, uh, we've solved all the file permissions problems that, that we had at the start. Um, all right. So that kind of describes Bolin, but I also want to point out this isn't the only way of doing Drupal on Docker. Um, there, there's a list here. I don't know if I'll mention all of them. There, um, yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, the, the Vagrant boot, uh, boot to Docker that we're using goes along with another tool called Druid. I haven't gotten around to trying it yet, um, but it does look really good. Um, there's an official, from Docker, there's an official Drupal image. I tried it briefly, um, haven't uh, gotten too far with that one. Uh, another one is Calibox. Um, I, I haven't tried that because I'm a Linux guy, but no, I think it works on Linux now. Um, they had a presentation uh, in LA, uh, and the, their new version is, is Docker-based. I, I, I can't really speak to what's going on there, but it looks like a really slick project too. Um, I think it's sort of the, uh, the opposite end of the scale of Bolin, as it has a, a lot of stuff. Um, it does a lot of things, and <laughs> Bolin's really trying to be lightweight and minimal. Um, Kitomatic, I don't know why that's here actually, because it's not really offering Drupal on Docker. Um, and then, yeah, basically you can just try vanilla Docker tools, you can put together your own um, Docker Compose files in your own project. Um, and Docker Machine, oh, uh, there's another project, Docker Machine NFS, and that will change the, the official boot to Docker Vagrant machine to use NFS. I tried it, but it didn't work on Linux. Um, so maybe it works on OS X. Anyway, just to say that there's a, a lot in this space going on right now. It's a fastly moving, uh, yeah, it's a fastly moving space, I think. It's hard to keep up with, but there's alternatives to look at. Um, back to Bolin. I asked my coworkers, what do you love about Bolin? Um, they had a bunch of encouraging responses, but uh, I think the most significant one is the third one. Uh, I love that, that Bolin comes with the Dave N attached at the other, other end of the line. <laughs> So, which says a lot about what tools you use is what tools can you support. Um, and I don't do all of the Docker support, but I do most of it. Uh, so, it, yeah. So when you're choosing what tools you want to try, consider how you're going to maintain and support it. Um, all right, another thing that I hope we have enough time to talk about is deployment. So let's get this thing running on live. Um, so right now, um, Bolin basically tries to stay out of the way of what's going on. We're, we're using a variety of, of hosting platforms. We're, we're on AWS, um, and we have our own servers. Uh, so there's a mixture. So n we need to be able to deploy. And basically, you can keep using, you can use Docker for your developers and not use Docker in production. That's what we're, we're doing. Um, but the ideal is that you have the same experience, because we're using it. Sorry, we're using it for testing as well, right? So same experience for Jenkins as it is for the developers. 
the ideal is that you also do that in production. Um, but the current reality is, I mean, there's Pantheon, Acquia, AWS, and many, many ways of hosting live Drupal. Um, when when we when we uh, think about ta taking what the developers are working on and bringing it through our, the pipeline, um, like a developer pushes their code, then it goes through automated tests, then it maybe goes through a full uh, test suite, and then there's another um, manual QA step, user acceptance tests, uh, then you put it in production. What we typically have there is basically a git commit. Um, or a git tag or whatever, which is still a git commit, um, that ends up on production. So then on the prod, you might do uh, a git uh, pull and you set your tag and so on, and then you have to run drush up db, you have to update your, your Drupal database. Um, and that, that works very well, that's basically how we do it. Another way that, that the DevOps world is seeing production happen is actually following a Docker image. So you create your code and you um, and get and everything and put it through your CI. But what you're doing instead is creating a Docker image with your code in it. And that image is going through your pipeline steps. Then when we get to the point where it's ready to deploy, then you can actually just switch the running images around and, and you're deployed. Because you can do your update database um, before it goes live. We're not doing that yet, but this is, uh, 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 sorry, in that concept of moving like a, a Docker image through your pipeline, um, I think that's basically described as immutable infrastructure. So it's not changing. It's this thing that you know is not changing all the way to production. Um, so that's something that we're working on, that we're working towards. I think. The Drupal DevOps community is maybe working on that too. And the way, I mean, I also think about what is the ideal seamless deployment. We had our, um, we had our civic actions retreat a couple of weeks ago and one of the best times is making music together. This is uh, four of my coworkers, talented bunch and there's a lot of musical talent. Uh, but basically there was this jam session at the, at the retreat um, and I don't know, there's a dozen musical people and they're just seamlessly making music while even like a, a player or two get in and out. Um, so, you know, you switch out a guitar player and they're still making great music. And that, I think, is um, a metaphor for seamless deployment on production that we want to aim for, where you can like s switch out um, even just features or something that you're adding to your production um, to your production site. Uh, further ideas about things that we're working on. Um, okay, I'll actually want to have more time for questions, so I'm just going to do this first point here. Um, I talked a lot about running the boot Docker Vagrant. Um, Thing which runs on on uh, yeah which runs Vagrant that actually for OS X users that actually is a resource strain on your computer because you have to run two computers so an idea that we're working on is a cloud development um, where we we're using Docker machine or something to uh, connect to um, a running Docker engine out there on a server for develop for developers another idea we have is to ha um, have a, a local d headless device, uh, like a yeah, like a super powered Raspberry Pi or something, um, something like that, where you just plug it into your network and it's the same kind of thing. But um, but then you're taking the processing away from your development computer. Um, not really an issue in Linux because it you only need one o OS. Um, Yeah, and, and some of these other ideas, I'd love to, to talk more about uh, the production, uh, deployment to production using Docker. Um, but I just want to wrap it up. In my, 
Yeah, just broad strokes perspective. I think Git has really, really changed the way code management has allowed for new workflows. Um, the, I mean, GitHub, the pull pull request thing is is nothing like we've seen before Git existed. I think Docker is still pretty new, but it's really revolutionizing the way we do infrastructure and, de and deployment. Um, yeah, and, and I think it's an exciting place to be a part of. Uh, and Docker is an exciting community to, to watch, so keep an eye on it. Um, so some takeaways, uh, Docker, Docker infrastructure can support your development team um, and, and your testing and production. I think that that can be proven. Uh, Bolin might, might be a way for you to get up and running using Docker and Drupal, um, but there's other options. Uh, yeah, and if while at the conference you want to try out Bolin, um, look for me. <laughs> Or try it out and let, let me know what broke. <laughs> uh, but I'll be around and and find me. Uh, and finally, really, I, I think Docker is fun. <laughs> um, yeah. I want to say thank you very much for your time, but also before you applaud, maybe, uh, is there any questions? There's a microphone there. Feel free to, if you want me to go back and cover something a bit more or any questions about Also, um, can review. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, there are a lot of people working on these sort of Docker local development tools. We have a BOF set up for 345 in room 130. Um, today? Today. Today. Uh, and we're going to, the Terra folks, the hopefully the FFW folks will be there. Yeah. So we're getting like kind of show and tell with each other if everyone else is interested in trying one or out. You want to see people demoing it on the computer, we're going to be there. So hopefully you can be there too. Yeah. That's great. I was hoping there would be a buff, um, but I didn't find that one when I checked. 130 at 345. Room 130. 345. Room 130 at 345. Okay. Just want to comment about the Drupal project. There is also the TerraOps project which is similar to Bowline, it, okay. and it's made by John Peck. And it, they are doing something like you, uh, especially for Drupal and Drupal 8. And, but it's not um, so much built for, uh, for CI and such. Okay. But you can also add it into the list. T-E-R-R-Ops. Yeah. It's on GitHub. Okay. Terra, T E W -R, R A. A. Okay. All right. I'll add it to uh, alternatives. All right. Well, if there's. Uh, thank you.